Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our reaction and review for The Bear Season 2, Episode 4, titled Honeydew. This is the Marcus story, and this is a really interesting episode, too. Like, I'll give a little bit of a behind-the-scenes tidbit mm, here okay. at the start. So, The Bear has really, really short production cycle, just because it's a very intimate sort of show. They mm -hmm. film it really, really fast. They had a different director for this episode, a guy by the name of Rami Youssef, who has his own show. He's very much a successful performer in his own right. But their normal directors did not have time to go over on location <laughs> to Denmark in order to do this. So they were just basically like, here's another really successful person. You go you go make the Marcus story. We'll take care of everything here. I, I, I love this episode. Like this episode, it just... Anytime you bring people to another country and just have fancy food, I'm there. I'm in. I'm 100% in. Listen, I loved that this episode was like right after the Sydney episode because yep. it's these two, their friendship is so wholesome. I absolutely just love these two and how they sort of help give each other permission to just be themselves and be okay with themselves and what they're doing. But I love that they basically both went on the same journey, but ended up at different places where they were like both, you know, going through to get inspiration and learn more and, you know, try different foods and get advice. And at the end of it, you know, in the last episode, we saw Sydney try to like make a ravioli or something where she was like, nope, mm -hmm. still not good. We saw Marcus at the end of this episode eat and be like, hmm, I'm doing all right. I was like, mm. so good. So good. Yeah. It, there's a lot that we can say about why these two stories are different. And just also just the inherent joy that comes from watching Marcus. Because to me. Marcus in that boat. He's so tall in that boat. I'm just like, oh, my God. I just he he's such a great <laughs> character and he's such a unique character. I. I love him. I, I love this episode. One more thing that we would like for you guys to do, and that is to hit that subscribe button, because in doing that, you make sure you don't miss any of our other coverage of The Bear. We have all sorts of great stuff here coming. We, we don't want you guys to miss out on any of it. And it's a great way to support the channel by hitting that subscribe button, and we really appreciate it. Okay, so let's just, the foundation for this episode, I think is really interesting, and that is... Here's this character of Marcus who has just been very much in Chicago for basically the entirety of his life. He has this opportunity to go and improve this craft that he's really passionate about. He's really discovered this in his time working with Carmi, that he's great at pastries. He's got like this sort of dessert talent. And, and so good at it that Carmi ate a donut off the floor. Yeah, like that is the real testament of greatness because I'm not <laughs> sure I would ever eat a donut off the floor. But you know what? Carmi was going through it. He deserved a donut yeah, at that point. But, you know, Denmark and I know Copenhagen in particular, but these are this is like a really big culinary center. There's a lot of like the best restaurants in the world are in this part of the country. And we see him <laughs> form this really interesting bond with this other character named Luca, who is really skilled, comes from a very different background. He's been doing this for well over a decade. And at first it felt like, Luca was a little bit cold to him and just sort of very by the book, but he starts to open up a little bit more. We see Marcus start to open up a little bit more. And I think they find this real collaborative spirit in a way that I think it's inspiring to Luca that he's teaching Marcus, somebody mm -hmm. like him. And I think Marcus, despite, you know, whatever difference in age there might be between the two of them, I think he really looks at Luca as this just wonderful teacher and this friend, this confidant. It's just a simple but I think really moving and interesting story of these two like finding something they need from each other. Marcus really broke through with that age joke where he was just like so how long you be doing this and Luca's like oh like 14 years yep. he's like oh since you were five like it was just <laughs> so funny and so cute and it was yep. it was just that nice moment where he saw Luca just had a bit of a smile and he was like okay you know what we're going through this together. Like I'm really going to teach him. And it, and it was nice that he was good to teach Marcus right from the beginning where he was just like, okay, you need to put this on with confidence. Like one of yeah. the things you need to have is 
confidence with this. You can't second guess yourself or you're just going to be making mistakes. That's sort of how you have to go through it. And it was cool to learn his backstory, even though, you know, we may never see this character again, but sort yeah. of the idea where he was like, no, I didn't go to school for this. I sort of fell into this job, you know, and I ended up getting really good at it, so good that I thought I was like the best mm -hmm. until I met this chef who I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not the best. This guy's the best. I'm going to just like shadow this guy and just learn anything that I possibly can from him because I will never be as good as this guy. So this guy will always be the guy to teach me kind of thing. And you could kind of see a little bit of that sparkle with Marcus where he has somebody like that to and it's Carmi, you know, like mm -hmm. he, you could see that kind of rolling in his head. And some of the other advice that he had given him as well, I feel like is just advice for everybody where yeah. like, it was just like, yeah, you know, some of, some of how I got as good as I did is from failing over and over and over and over again until I was able to get to the point where I wasn't failing anymore. And it's kind of like, yeah, a lot of people who are experts in something, you had to have failed to be able to get to that point because the people who are experts, you know, they, they've been in it and they've been doing it and you're not really able to get to that point if you didn't try. I think what Carmi, he either may or may not have realized this, but Luke is obviously going to be able to teach him in a functional way. Okay, yeah. here are some recipes. Here's a great way to do this. But I think in an inspirational <laughs> and even an emotional way, he was able to teach him as well because Carmi... He is many things. He's not always patient. He's not always going to give Marcus the best advice or the best lessons when something goes wrong. But I think if Marcus can sort of take away from this some of what he learned and then be able to bring that back, he can mm -hmm. realize, okay, you know what? I'm capable of doing really, really great things. I mean, we even saw this epitomized in this scene where he actually, you know, plays the role of savior, like he potentially saves a life here. And I think it does help him sort of realize despite, you know, my own humble beginnings, everything I'm going through, this situation I have with my mom, like I am really skilled. I'm really talented. There's a lot that I can do. And I think he feels so empowered by all of this because of the environment he's around as opposed to, you know, Sydney and you mentioned Sydney earlier. Like mm -hmm. I think the reason it doesn't work for Sydney is she's in like the least empowering environment ever throughout that episode. She's being yeah. told constantly, okay, don't take our people, you know, here's some advice. You're going to get betrayed. Bad things are going to happen. It's just, she's surrounded by this negativity. And I think Marcus finds himself surrounded <laughs> by these really, really good and inspiring things. And that's the thing about this episode that I really liked as well, because Marcus back at home, he's very worried about his mom. He's, you know, been taking care of her for a long time. He shared more of that information with Luca in this episode yeah. and that he's, he put so much of his time and his heart into other people that he doesn't always have anything left for himself. We even saw him with the person, you know, that had had the bike accident where he was just like, drop everything, help this person. My mom is not doing well, help her. Like everything is about other people. And even with this trip supposed to be about him, he is still thinking about other people. He's checking in at home all the time, sending pictures mm -hmm. back to his mom helping this person on the bicycle. That's why it was really nice. I mentioned this at the beginning of the video. That friendship with Sydney and Marcus is so important to both of them, but in this particular case to Marcus because she almost gives him like permission to be okay for him to put into himself that it's like, okay, I get it. You know, like I understand you're nervous to be out there that you think you're going to get the call that something's going to happen to your mom. Don't worry. Like she is in great hands and this is your time to be you, to learn what you can to be better. Because if you don't put energy into yourself, how are you going to keep putting it out onto everybody else, which is something that you do. <laughs> so like, you know, truly, Feel that you have permission to give yourself your own energy. I was just like, oh my goodness. And then there was that awkward, I miss you, where it seems like Marcus might be into Sydney. <laughs> I, I think you probably are, Marcus, but you know what? It doesn't sound like she is because she called him dude at the end. I was like, oh, uh-oh. 
Okay, worry We're about one zone. Worry about that later, Marcus. It's okay. You're having a good time right now. You have improved your skill dramatically. I hope you can go back to Chicago, bring a lot of this energy with you, and maybe some of that will kind of, you know, transfer over to some other people who clearly need it. Because we are seven weeks away now from the bear opening in this episode. There's clearly a lot going on. You know, this show is billed as a comedy. One of the funniest moments of the entire season <laughs> is when he is talking to, you know, sad new sugar. And then <laughs> at the end of this conversation, you know, her pregnancy gets revealed to everybody and things just falling. The, ne next to when we had the great dust storm with Cousin earlier this season, <laughs> which is still the funniest moment on the bear. Like, that did bring me a very good laugh. No, that that brought me a good laugh. And it was good. I know that wasn't the way that Sad New Sugar wanted that to <laughs> yeah. come out. But it's better that it's just out there now. I mean, people were obviously very happy for her. And, of course, Richie's like, I knew it. <laughs> Rich, by the way, Richie would be the guy who you could tell Richie, by the way, there's an alien living under your basement. He has been demanding tribute in the form of TV dinners for a month. Richie would then get up and be like, I knew it. He would say, <laughs> I, know. I know it. He knows everything <laughs> after the fact, after he is told that something is real. But you know what, Richie? That's kind of why I like you. You're such a, I, I don't even know the word to describe him. He's a heel. He, he's a very entertaining heel. He's very endearing. <laughs> I, I really, I really like him. The, yeah. The big thing now is sort of like we had a little bit of a time jump here because, you know, the last episode felt like it was more like a, around 11 or 10 weeks. And now yep. all of a sudden we're at seven weeks. So, Claire, you seem like you're bye-bye. I hope that that's the case. I said that in the last episode. I am not interested. So we'll see if that ends up sticking or not. But what we did see at the beginning of this episode is they are like, failing inspections they yeah. have bills past due like things are not getting paid things are not getting done it's it's not looking great yeah like i'm <clears throat> i i feel hopeful enough that the restaurant will open but i do kind of worry that the finale is we haven't seen it obviously is going to roll around and we're going to be in this situation where the restaurant opens and then like closes a week later just that's this show is accurately presenting how hard yeah. it is to open a restaurant yeah. And I mean, they're having like fees on top of fees where they're just like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, Michael never registered the beef as an actual company. So like we're paying a fine on that on top of us having to actually register the bear. So we're paying on top of that. Like it, it really is just like with anything let's say you're like doing like a home remodel it's like oh i'm gonna pull down the kitchen and pull out the walls and raise the ceiling and all of a sudden it's like oh cool there's all these problems there's a whole family of raccoons up there awesome that it's just like you you think you have a budget but you always have to have like that extra budget just in case like the property brothers are like oh okay you have fifty thousand dollars ten thousand of those dollars are for the just in case what we're gonna find yeah now Okay, since we don't know what's coming up, I'm just going to throw an idea <laughs> that's out there. Okay. Not only do we need, you know, a good bit of time in these upcoming episodes to resolve all of these just-in-case problems, because there's probably going to be more. Yes. I want to see what it's actually like for these characters to promote this restaurant, because you got to get the word out that this is open, right? Mm -hmm. Are we going to see... You know, Carmi and Cousin, like, screaming at each other at one of these, like, Taste of Chicago fairs where you walk around, you get, like, a meat skewer at some place. You, I, I really want to see them get thrown out of their comfort zone now because they, I think we're, we're seeing this season a lot of, you know, their strengths, but also mm -hmm. how their stresses of opening this business are really playing on all of them. Like, they're all obviously very talented, but it is this idea of you are having to create something out of nothing. <laughs> How can we then throw you further out of your comfort zone and find a way to come up with these other sort of challenges? I, I want to see every single aspect of this process on this show. And I worry, at least for this season, because it's not like it's that long and there's mm -hmm. still not that many episodes to go. Yeah, that's the thing is like, is 
Is this whole season going to be about, you know, getting the restaurant open? Again, we haven't seen forward, so we don't really yeah. know what the spoilers are, which is fine. Don't spoil it. Yeah. Uh, but then is it then next season we're going to get into the whole like, okay, one now you have a restaurant. How do you fill it? Which is yeah. really difficult. Like getting it open is really only half the battle. Getting people in there and then staying with you, that is like really hard. <laughs> And the, the other thing that's like tied into all of this is let's say Carmi does get people to stay there. Like, let's say that this does end up being a success. <clears throat> is he happy with it? What happens when you get everything you've always wanted? At least with Marcus in this episode, I feel like this is what he's always wanted. I think this does bring him happiness, even in a way that I don't know if it does for any other character on this show. Like maybe Tina to some extent, like she seemed to be enjoying culinary school, but it's just there this isn't a celebration of i think of creativity in its purest form this episode of what happens when somebody really finds themselves and that's there's so much joy in that and it makes yeah. me so worried about what's going to happen when some of this joy is inevitably taken away i would much rather be sent to denmark to go to school with luca and sort of get that mentoring advice than what tina's going there and actually going to school because like one of the things that luca said that really stuck with me and i think can be applied just across the board to sort of any business or any anything yeah. you're in is he was basically like you can have all the fancy tricks and whatever whatever when making a dish but like you need to be open to ideas and putting yourself out there and taking in other mm -hmm. people's ideas to like have a mad good recipe like it's not just about being able to like perfectly place an almond somewhere or whatever right it's really about what are you doing with these ingredients and how are they inspiring you and how are they inspiring other people and that's what makes a good meal is being open to other people's ideas all right, let's let's rank here the jobs on the Bear season two so far. Number one, trip to Denmark. I think we're both in full agreement that that is the best. Yes, I will even stay on that boat. <laughs> I would stay on that boat too. Be, hey, look, I get the. I wouldn't want to live there full time, mind you. Yeah, no, okay. I'm I'm not really a boat person, but that's all right. All right, no, number two, I will say culinary school. Number three, I will say breaking stuff with Richie. That does not sound like a lot of fun. It seems like- That I mean, sounds way more fun than culinary school. I'm with Richie. Let's okay, break you some can, walls. You can go have fun with Richie. I don't want to be screamed at by cousin for like four hours a day. That's all right. I'll scream back at okay, cousin. You, Me and Richie, we go at it. You, you guys have fun. I'm going to go learn how to cook a little bit more. But okay, that's our take on the Bear Season 2, Episode 4. Thanks for hanging out with us as we go through all of this season. Hit yep. that subscribe button for more from the bear and also by doing that you help to support us at the channel and thank you to our patrons for your support you. that means so much we'll see you guys here next time